storage systems. Everyone needs one. As a matter of fact, I've been needing one for, uh, over a year now. So today, I'm going to build an automatic storage system for every item in the game, and then decorate it with a combination of the new Cherry Grove biome and the Lush Cave biome, creating the perfect paradise for all my favorite mobs to live. Alright, because this project is so big, I'm going to take the old three-phase approach. Phase 1 is what I like to call pain. I'm going to need to mine this massive area under my mega base down to bedrock, so we have room to build this thing. So first things first, we're going to need a beacon. And now I can get started on mining out the first few layers of the room. Okay, that's the first few layers complete. Next step is to mine the outside of the circle all the way down to bedrock. And while I'm doing that, I'll quickly get you caught up on the plan. As you probably know, Deep Slate can't be instamined. So mining out this entire room by hand isn't an option. I mean, the outer edge alone took five hours. So because I'd like to have this part done sometime this week, I'm going to be using TNT dupers. And with the outer edge filled with a layer of water, I should be left with a clean hole once this is finished. Don't take that out of context. Before I can actually build the TNT dupers, I'm going to need to remove a few more layers. Otherwise, they'll just unbuild themselves. The first option for removing a lot of deep slate like this is to convert it into moss and then break it with a hoe, which is definitely faster than regular mining, but there's a better method. For that, I'm going to need lots of TNT. And then if I place one every couple blocks, it should remove three layers pretty cleanly. Now I just need to do it to the entire room. Next, I'm going to need some scaffolding and a bunch of glazed terracotta. Using the scaffolding, I can easily remove all the lava that's in the way. and then use the glazed terracotta to build a circle that the TNT dupers will bounce off of. Now, to remove a circular area like this, we can't just use any old TNT duper. I mean, I guess we could, but where's the fun in that? Instead, we're going to use Canyul's two-sided self-returning three-way duper. Okay. And that should be it. Now if I just remove this block of redstone... Okay, let's try this again. Third time's a charm. And it actually was. After letting the first machine run for a while, I had enough room to build the second one. And from there, all I did was try to mine as many diamonds as I could while cleaning up any blocks that were left behind. Alright, I got around 4 stacks of diamond ore from that, and now if I just do a little more cleaning up... We're left with a nice clean hole. Now, because there's so many items in the game... Because there's so many items in the game, the storage system is actually a little bigger than the room itself. So, I'm going to need to dig tunnels on each of the sides to make room for it. And you've probably seen more than enough mining already, so I'll make it quick. Alright, by the end of phase 2, we should have a fully functional storage system, albeit a little plain. But we'll take care of the decorating in the next phase. In order for that to happen though, I'm going to need to build it. Oh, really? To save myself some suffering, I already designed this part in a super flat world, and used the Lightmatica mod to turn it into a schematic, which will make the building process a lot easier. 
but usually when I build Minecraft things, I like to use blocks. And as usual, there's 10 hours of my life showcased in less than a minute. So now I just gotta place down all of these blocks, which funnily enough is probably going to be the easiest part of this entire build. And while I build, let me give you a rundown of what this thing is packing. The storage system can sort up to 1008 different items, each with two double chests worth of storage, which gives it a maximum capacity of just under 7 million items. That's just about everything other than these holes, but to fix those, I'm going to need cherry wood. So now would probably be a good time to update to 1.20. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Alright, let's go find these pink trees. From what I've heard, or what I just read on the wiki a minute ago, they basically just spawn anywhere where mountains are. So, not here. Let me just not lose this nether portal, and then we can actually go looking for it. I'll just take one of these, and then a sapling. There we go. Now I can fill in the floor gaps, the wall gaps, add beacons for all the effects. Add a cherry tree to the center to fill up some space. Add pink petals everywhere to break up the green and gray. And clean up my mess. And that should be everything. But also nothing. Because to set up a storage system for every item in the game, I actually need to collect every item in the game. Which probably could have been an entire video in itself. But I'm more of a record for three weeks and upload every one and a half months kind of guy. So, back on the super flat world now, I went through the entire creative inventory and organized every single item in this long row of chests. There's a few items that I cut corners with to save space, like candles. I'm not going to take up 17 slices of my storage system to have a chest for every color candle. I'm sorry, but 117,000 candles worth of storage seems a little excessive. I'm going to go through this part pretty quick because you didn't click on this video to watch me craft 11 types of hanging signs. Even though you just did, you clicked for this. So in short, what I did was place two of every item into shulker boxes. And if you're wondering why two, it's because I need one for the display and one for the item filter. And so I get less cheating allegations, here's the main highlights of the block collecting, like me getting the ancient debris for the netherite block. Lots of explosions, hot orange stuff, many wow, and the deep slate emerald, less explosions, green shiny thing, less wow, and the nether star. Normally I'd put intense music here, but it didn't even damage me. And the moment I destroyed my dragon egg, which upset me quite a lot actually. Basically, I tried duping the egg with my sand duper, but it just got pushed into the portal, where I'm guessing it landed on the platform, and if you don't know already, any blocks that are in this area get deleted when something comes through the portal. But I guess there's something poetic about trying to duplicate something that's supposed to be one of a kind, only to destroy the original in the process and be left with nothing. Anyways, that's everything collected. Now if I just... There's all of the display items placed down. With the exception of some of the new archaeology items, but those are gonna have to be for another video. 
Now, in order for the storage system to actually work, I need to set up the item filters by placing the correct item and four filler items into all 1008 hoppers. For my filler item, I decided to use named emeralds, and if you're wondering why my levels didn't change, it's because I named them all before the video started. For the blank spaces, unstackable items, and rare blocks, like the netherite block, I filled all five slots with the fillers so the items just pass by. Those kinds of items will go to the overflow chest so I can sort them manually. And once again, this isn't exactly the most exciting process, so I'll just do one of these. It's done. So if I just grab some random items out of this chest and toss them in the input chest, everything should get sorted and the overflow should stay empty. Okay, something's wrong. Ah. Let's try that again, and this time I'm throwing in a shulker box at the end. So if everything works right, the only thing that should end up in the overflow chest is that shulker box. And there it is. Now if you'll just excuse me while I unload this entire chest monster into my new storage system. And here it is. Time to give this empty hole some life. Here's the plan. In honor of the new cherry grove biome, I want to have a massive cherry tree in the center of the room, with branches stretching out to the walls and covering the whole ceiling in a layer of leaves. Around the tree will be a combination of the lush cave and cherry grove biome, inhabited by a bunch of cool mobs. And that all sounds great, but I've never built a giant tree before and I don't have any of the blocks that I'm going to need. Okay, I've got a bunch of stone now, and I'm going to try my best to make a natural looking landscape. Then if I grab some bone meal, I can start turning it into moss. And it's finally done, but it's a little bit overgrown. This one's for all those people who keep telling me I need to touch grass. So there we have it. Next, I want to give the walls a makeover. They don't look horrible as is, but it still kind of looks like all I did was dig a hole. I wonder why. Alright, hopefully that's the last time I have to farm stone for this project. Otherwise, I might hit rock bottom. After collecting some moss for mossy bricks, I got to work, building with a pallet of stone, stone bricks, mossy stone bricks, and andesite, to hopefully give the walls some texture. I left a gap in the middle of each side so I could add a waterfall to break up the endless sea of grey, and then added a border around the edges to give it some more depth. Next up is the roof, which is mostly just going to serve as a backdrop for the leaves. I wanted it to have a shallow dome shape and again used stone, which I would later convert to moss. Alright, the next thing I want to work on is the giant tree. So I think it's a safe bet that I'm going to need some of this. Okay, I don't know if this is going to be enough, but I'm ready to give it a go. Like I said before, when it comes to massive custom trees, I don't know what I'm doing. I tried finding tutorials, but most of them are world edit tutorials, so that doesn't really do much for me. But if I was certain about one thing, it was that this tree wasn't going to build itself, so I got to work. And I'm gonna be honest here, the trunk started out really bad. It ended up having more of a mountain shape than a curve. And when I realized that the roots weren't going to be enough to save it, I decided to try again. And that's probably the best decision I could have made, because after that, it actually started to look more like a tree. From there, I continued building up the trunk, and eventually branched out with some branches. And after a couple days of trying my best, this was the result. I mean, obviously it's a little bit ugly in its current state, but that's why Notch gave us leaves. To cover up our ugly. So I have about 11 shulkers of leaves, and I think that'll be enough, but I honestly have no idea where to begin with these. And so I didn't. 
because the idea of placing thousands of leaves down with no plan and ruining the entire build was nothing less than nightmare fuel. So instead, I took a page out of the prose book and decided to learn world edit. Or at least the very basics. And after a little practice in a super flat world, and accidentally filling the entire area I was working in with leaves, I was able to create this. After turning it into a schematic, all I had to do was build. And so I built. That is, until the ceiling got in the way of the final few layers and I had to remove it and then build it back again. But before long, I had a tree that was way better than I could have expected. Now, without the brightness turned up, the rest of the room is really dark. So the next thing I'm going to do is grab some glowstone from the raid farm, and then start placing it under these moss carpets until the entire room is lit up. Well, the floors definitely look a lot better now, especially with shaders on. I guess the next step is to start adding all the detail, starting with the moss carpets along the roots, some of these clay areas with puddles of water where our axolotls will live, and then I want to go ahead and start adding some azalea trees, and some regular cherry trees. One thing I just noticed is that the tops of the trees are really dark, and just don't look very good, so I'm going to hide some glowstone in them like I did for the giant cherry tree. And now that that weird shadow effect is gone, I'll plant some drip leaves. Drip leaves? Lily pads with legs in all of the puddles. Now for the pink petals under the cherry trees. Glow berries. Which I am going to try my best to spread out along the ceiling. And while those are growing, I can add in some bamboo. Okay, I think I solved the emptiness problem I was having, but it still feels a little lonely in here. And I think the only way to solve that is to start bringing in the animals. First we have axolotls. Snow foxes. Alays, some frogs, pandas, one of each parrot, which I tamed in the mob heads episode, some wild cats from my iron farm. Foxes. Bees. And I wanted to add some rabbits, but, you know, the whole food chain thing. So there we go. Now I have friends. But the thing about friends is that they can be annoying sometimes. So I'm going to need a way to leave this place. After a little bit of planning, I dug out four spots for entrances on the surface, and used a 3x3 trapdoor design by Sam Plays Minecraft, in combination with a new calibrated skulk sensor, to create this. A pillager pitfall trap. A secret entrance to my dream storage system.